hello guys uh welcome back to my channel maison african motives uh still working on the question paper which was written in march 2018 uh for mathematics n2 so we shall just have a continuation uh from this part working on question number three now as uh, we saw the last part that we worked on on question number two on algebraic expression so this one is actually a mix up of questions as you can see the first question is to simultaneous we are solving simultaneous equation the second one you're solving a quadratic second one is something it's so forth is something else so it's a mix up but we shall just see on this question how we are supposed to answer the question so given on 3.1 that a bag contains 60 green and white pool balls okay so we've got uh, green and white pool balls together combined together are equal to 60 okay then twice the number of green balls is nine more than the white balls twice the number is more than is nine more than white balls okay so what does this mean let's just uh take this consideration to just put uh let's just say g to represent our green balls All right, then uh, we have got uh, W there for white balls. Uh, these are pool balls, guys, not others. So these are just pool balls, okay? So there are 60 green, white, and white there. So if we add the green and the white together, they must give us a 60. I think this one is straightforward. So if we add together the green and the white, they must give us a 60. There, which is the total all right then twice the number of green which is the green is 2g like this twice is nine more than the white ball so just twice this one is nine more than so which means for this to be equal to the white balls the white balls should be added to nine the white balls added to nine should be equal to the white balls to the twice of the number so that is what you're going to have so if we take this to this side we shall remain with 2g minus w which is equal to 9 we just transpose our w to this side so these are now normal equations guys that you're supposed to solve so as you can see there are so many methods actually that you use when you are solving simultaneous equations because you're now having the first equation and the second equation so take note you can use elimination you can use substitution so many methods okay taking advantage that because w and w here are actually the same so i can eliminate this by adding the two so take note it's a plus and it's a minus so if i add the two i can eliminate or you can use substitution most of you that's what you want substitution but you can actually use elimination here g plus 2g which is 3g is equal to 60 plus 9 which is 69 so you divide by 3 by 3 in this case that's our g is going to be 69 divided by 3 which is actually 23 so like i said someone could have just maybe you wanted to make w to be the subject in this case maybe from equation 2 your w is going to be if you take it to that side it's going to be 2g minus 9 then you substitute into any of these equation in place of w you are going to so in place of this you are going to substitute in place of w you substitute with 2g minus 9 is equal to 60 we are going to have 3g is equal to minus 9 to this side is going to be 60 plus 9 which is 69 divide by 3 by 3 our g is going to be 23 so as you can see you can actually use substitutions it depends or you could have just used elimination at once okay this one so we've got our g there which is 23 using either way then to find w i can just substitute in any of these whether this one or any of these equations because i have g so 23 plus w is equal to 60 therefore i'm just going to transpose this which means w it's 60 minus 23 
okay and this is going to give us 37 so that is what you're going to obtain in this case in terms of w so as you can see uh, the question is calculate the number of green and white balls respectively so green is this one which is 23 white is this one which is w which is 37 so that will be the total of the two then so for x on 3.2 uh, as you can see it's a quadratic equation so most of us we are used to the quadratic formula so someone is just going to apply the quadratic formula there which is uh, 3.2 so remember the quadratic formula guys that uh, x is equivalent to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a like this all right so which means you can just substitute according to this this is your a your b and your c remember so your a in this case is 5 your b is negative 3 and your c is also negative 3 a b c so you can just substitute in this case so it's going to be minus and minus take note guys so this minus here and this minus gives us a positive so it's going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is in this case is minus 3 so it's minus 3 squared like this minus 4 times a our a which is 5 times c and our c in this case is negative 3 like this everything over 2a right which is 2 times a which is 2 by 5 like this so that's what you're going to have at the end so uh using your calculator normally i let me just write this minus minus so that i don't confuse someone it was a minus and a minus and this gave us a plus okay minus and minus it gave us a plus plus or minus like this the square root of so using your calculator i just want you to simplify this part alone under the square root this is going to give us a 69 there everything over 10 so now we can separate our x since we are just left with a single square root 3 plus the square root of 69 separately guys you determine your answer here or another one would be x is equal to 3 minus square root of 69 over 10 you determine your answers separately so that means from this one so using your calculator properly you're going to obtain 1 comma 131 or another one is going to give us x which is um, minus 0 comma 531 like this to three decimal places okay so the idea there is uh, the application of the calculator you must make sure that you use the calculator properly guys always all right then on the other part we are given given a wheel of a motorcycle with a diameter take note whenever you are given diameter this is centimeters you have to convert this to meters which is divided by 100 that's 0 0.75 meters and we are given the rotational frequency which is a 0 comma 10 comma 5 which is in revs per second take note these are revs per second so this is your n all right so we have got the diameter so this is 3.3 okay let's just list something here what do we have here on 3.3 remember we said we've got the diameter in meters this one so we have got our diameter which is 0 comma 75 meters and n which is 10 comma 54 reps per second this one is our n here so the question is calculate the angular velocity in right per second all right so they we must be very very careful here because um okay anyways not much because the angular velocity will be given here angular velocity and circumferential velocity okay circumferential velocity okay which is the angular one which is w there uh, which is 3.31 so we need w which is equivalent to 2 pi n so this is n in revs per second so that we can obtain this in right per second okay so it's going to be 2 pi times n which is our n is 10 comma 5 4 like this all right so please guys make sure that they 
you are supposed to actually apply your calculator properly all right so that this can actually make sense so the first thing that you're going to have is in radians like i'm obtaining here okay that's two pi let me just put it here two pi okay that's two pi times 10,54 like this so this is what you're going to obtain 66 points okay so this is going to give us the five so it's going to give us 66.225 okay so this is what you're going to have guys in right there per second so that's what you're going to have so take note this should be in revs per second in order for you to have right per second if it was in revs per minute that's where you divide it by 60 so that it can give us a revs per second okay then 3.32 we are now given from the same information to calculate the the peripheral velocity in meters per second this is the one which is the circumferential the one that i showed you there where is my formula okay there this one this circumferential velocity this one is the one that you are referring as the peripheral velocity is the one that you're going to to use and you're even given n is the rotational frequency revs per second that is revolution per second all right so you're going to use that to find um this v in meters per second so it's uh from the formula it's pi dn okay which is pi times d remember our d is there 0 0.75 in meters times our n and remember our n is in revs per second not not uh this one this one is right per second w we need this n which was in revs per second which is 10 comma 54 so it's 10 comma 54 like this all right so that is what you're going to do you multiply you're going to obtain 24 comma 834 which is now in meters this is speed velocity in meters per second all right so that is what you're going to say as you can see it's an application of the formula sheet also that you are given so it's very very best that you mix the two or you combine the two with the formula sheet again so that you'll be able to understand uh, how you answer these typical questions okay anyways let's see another question which is last part which is on 3.4 asked a sector of a circle as an area of 184 square centimeters at an angle of 68 degrees calculate the arc length of the circle okay the first thing is um the conversion of units uh, angles we remember that whenever you're working with uh, a sector this angle is supposed to be in radians so you're supposed to convert in radians and uh, I told you guys from the previous conversions that we talked about that for you to have theta in radians you are going to have theta in degrees over 57,3 so our theta in degrees is 68 degrees over 57,3 so this is going to give us theta in radians which is going to be 1,187 if you round off properly here in radians so this is our theta now in radians and we are given the area we are given the area in this case okay we have got the area which is 184 square centimeters all right and uh, in this case what you're supposed to do is uh, to have the arc length because the question is to calculate arc length okay we know that the arc length is actually the product of the two because uh, from the angle that is uh, remember from this formula we have a uh, theta which is the sector theta is equal to arc over radius so that means the arc is equal to radius times theta that is the arc length and the area is of r square so which means we can actually determine the value of what of r from this one 
from the area all right because we are given the the area all right so you're going to find the value of r from the area since we know that area is half r squared theta so let's just substitute the area 184 is equal to half times r squared times theta which is 1 comma 1 eight seven like this okay so this is what you're going to do um let's just take rid of this multiply by two by two so that we can get rid of these two here so you're going to have two times 184 then we divide by this because we want to remain with r squared so you're going to divide by one comma eight seven is equal to r squared so what can we do to find r definitely we need the square root so you can actually simplify this to a decimal then you will determine the square root of the answer so if you do so you are going to obtain your r as 17,608 and this will be actually in centimeters since this was in centimeters in square centimeters so once this radius is there it's easier for now for us to calculate the arc length because as we transposed this formula we determine the arc length as the radius times the theta which is in radians so therefore our arc length is going to be radius theta times theta which is the radius remember we have the radius in this case the one that we just calculated now the radius here is there so it's going to be 17 comma 608 multiplied by the theta in radians and this is 1 comma 187 in radians so multiplying the two is going to give us the arc length all right so this is going to give us 20 comma and that's 900 zero, zero, something like that which is a centimeter so we're just going to remain with 20 comma 9 centimeters so that is going to be the arc length in this case so as you can see guys remember always guys when you are working with a sector is a sector like this you're having radius radius and this is your theta and this is your arc length this one this is your arc length so you can just write it as s so this arc length is radius times theta okay so that's how you simply determine this and the area of this sector is the one that we said is half r squared theta that will be the area of the sector so you can use the area of the sector to determine the radius then after determining the radius you will now find the arc length but take note that always your units of measurements for this angle theta should be in radians so that's what we had guys from this um, part working on mathematics or so entry level past papers and revision so shall meet again working on the following questions on this question paper till we meet again